Hey everyone, welcome to the Canine Culture Podcast, where we talk about everything dog. Q and A's with veterinarian professionals, rescue operators, everyday topics. We cover everything dog on this podcast. So make sure you subscribe to the Canine Culture Podcast on your favorite podcast platform, and make sure you're following us on social media on both Instagram and Facebook. Thanks again for listening. Now here's that next episode. Hey everyone, welcome to the Canine Culture Podcast. This is your host, Brittany, and we are joined today by Lauren Kennedy. We're going to be talking about pet loss and grief resources. So thank you, Lauren, for joining us today. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm really happy to be here. So I know this is a topic that is uncomfortable. Um, a, lot, a lot of people want to talk about it. And so whenever we connected, I was really excited because it is a topic that unfortunately is inevitable. Uh, and so having someone to discuss this with and kind of educate people on, uh, I think is going to be really helpful. So I think we could kind of start with just a little bit about you, like tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Tell us a little bit about the Tilly Project so people can kind of learn about that too. Yeah. Um, again, thank you so much for having me. So I do end of life pet photography. So basically I am photographing pets at the end stages of their lives, whether that means that they are senior getting a little bit older or they have a terminal illness or just, you know, something is going on there where their families recognize that they are just getting to the end stages of their lives. Um, in doing that, I recognized that I was not able to photograph all of the families that were coming to me wanting the service. And so because of that, I started the nonprofit organization, the Tilly Project. So the Tilly Project is an end of life pet photography network. And then we also really focus on pet loss and bereavement, um, just resources and really creating a community that is open and creates a, a space to really validate that grief, whether it be anticipatory or grief after you've lost a pet. Let's talk a little bit then about, let's say you know the pet loss is coming. Uh, you've gotten a diagnosis, perhaps it's terminal or things are just going south. And so I don't want to put it in the terms of if you're so fortunate to kind of know, but at the same time, if you are fortunate to know that that time is coming, do you have any recommendations for things that people can do prior to their pets passing? Of course, the photography, the end of life photography is fantastic uh, and being able to do that. And so that's one thing that you kind of help with with the Tilly Project. Is there anything else that you've seen that's been really beneficial for helping people get through that time? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really great question. I would say just going through kind of the motions and setting up a really strong support system, um, finding that support system and, you know, making them aware of the situation and just kind of preemptively letting them know about the situation so that they are able to be a support. Besides that, because I think that that's really going to aid in that grief journey, I would also say just coming up with a plan with your vet, um, whether, you know, that be just looking for the signs of if your pet starts to deteriorate or a game plan, like here, here's when I need to call. Here's what I need to do. Here's mm -hmm. the medications that we want to do. Here's the route that I want to take to ensure that my pet is comfortable and not in pain. So I'd say out of everything, um, you know, those those two things are pretty uh, universal, I would say. But then for every person, because grief is not one size fits all. It's so different. Same with anticipatory grief or mm -hmm. um, for those. I mean, anticipatory grief is a, a term that I first kind of heard about when I started this journey. So for folks who haven't heard it, it's sort of I mean, it, it kind of speaks for itself. It's the grief before the passing. It's when you know that your pet is sick or you know that your pet is older, getting to the end stages of their lives. Just it's that anticipation that I know this is going to happen. It's coming up. What do I do with that? Mm -hmm. well, actually, those are two, uh, you know, kind of universal um, things to really focus on. But then, of course, you know, like I just said, it's not one size fits all. So um, there are some folks who want to do some reading, you know, reading some books out there, wanting to learn about uh, the next stages and, and start just kind of researching grief and tools and, and kind of gathering that toolbox, if you will. Um, 
And for other people, it's just spending as much time as you can, you know, creating a bucket list, creating whatever they need. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think two of the things you kind of talked on was one, setting up a plan with your vet. Uh, we were fortunate enough to sort of be able to set up a plan. It wasn't with our actual traditional vet. It was actually with our um, Eastern medicine vet, the the vet that did the acupuncture for one of our Pomeranians that had cancer. And she kind of put the plan in place for me because I couldn't do it myself. And so I had her support. I had her advice. I had her backing. Mm. Um, and then kind of as part of that, you said finding a support group. Fortunately, where I was working at the time, I was able to let everyone know, hey, this might happen soon. And when it does, just know I'll be out of work. I won't be responding as I normally do. And kind of just preparing everyone around me for it. And then even going so far as to when I do come back to work, don't bring it up. Don't talk about it. Don't give me a hug. Don't do anything that's going to, uh, you know, kind of bring it up again because I have to deal with it at home. I, I don't want to have to come back and deal with that at work. And so that was really helpful for me. Yeah. You know, I love I love hearing you say that because it's really, you know, you set those boundaries and. Because, you know, it's one of those things where if you have a pet or any type of grief and, you, grief and you come back to work or, you know, you see your friends, one of the first questions that I think is asked with the most pure intentions, of course, is like, how are you doing? And of right. course, surefire away, I'm going to start sobbing. You know yes. what I mean? So I really, I really appreciate just hearing you talk about how you, you set those boundaries to mm -hmm. help us get through the day. Because isn't that grief, you know, especially early right. grief? Isn't it just getting through the day? Isn't it just managing on some days? So I can Absolutely. really that you did that. I think that's really wonderful. And I think that applies for any grief, whether it's pet loss, um, um, you lose a parent, you lose a spouse, you lose a sibling, whatever yeah. it might be. We are not trained to deal with that. And so kind of like what you said, how are you doing? That's right. the first thing we kind of instinctively think to say, or we've been conditioned to say, and quite frankly, 99% of the time, that's not at all the thing to say, right? After someone loses a pet or a person in their life. And so I think this is really helpful for people who, even if you don't think you're going to be experiencing grief, but perhaps you know someone that will, someone who might soon experience a loss, think about your approach to that person and think to yourself, what questions would I want to be asked, you know? Mm -hmm. How would yeah. I want to be treated after the fact? Right. Absolutely. Yep. Definitely. So then, okay, your pet passes. Obviously, there's an immense amount of grief that comes from that, probably more so than what you had prior. And so I know the Tilly Project, you guys link out to a bunch of different resources um, to kind of help walk you through that, get through that grief, as well as different things such as memorials and keepsakes. Um are there a few of those that you'd like to kind of talk about, a few that you've heard have been really great for people? Yeah, you know what um, that I'd love to share? Well, first, yes, on our website, we have an entire list of different ways to like memorialize your pets. And I tried to compile a, a bunch of ways, um, you know, whether that be using the ashes in jewelry or, um, you know, prior to your pet passing, if you're able to do you know, like one of the the paw prints, like make your own. Um, so there's an entire list of just unique ways, sweatshirts with your pet. You know, there's a ton of ways. But what I did want to mention is today, um, I actually met with a, um, she's a reverend at a church and she actually does pet memorials mm -hmm. uh, and she does funerals as well, as well as grief counseling. Um, and we were just, you know, going back and forth, talking about the idea of, uh, you know, a, a ceremony or a memorial or a funeral, whichever one of those words seems to fit and, and fits in with your beliefs and how you feel about that. But I thought it was a really beautiful thing. And I think that whether you're religious, whether you're not religious and you just want to take some intentional time to really memorialize and think of your pet, I think that that creating that ceremony and that ritual is a really beautiful thing. And I really appreciate how she offers that. I think that that's really nice. We do it for people, mm -hmm. you know, we do right. it for people. Why not do it for pets? It makes sense. She was just mentioning today that, um, you know, 
they are part of our family. So why wouldn't, why wouldn't that be a thing? So I really, I really appreciated that. And I appreciated her insight. So I think, uh, you know, whatever you choose, I think it is really special and meaningful to intentionally set aside some time to either do a ritual or ceremony. Yeah, absolutely. I really like that. I mean, you don't traditionally see that, but it does right. make sense. And I really think as things are progressing, as we are becoming more, gosh, what is the word, aware as a society, I think a lot of people are really realizing the space that a pet holds in someone's life or in a family's life, you know, their position and how important they are. Sure, absolutely. Um, yes, definitely. There is also, just a real quick, another thing I wanted to mention is uh, there's another product called Youth a Bag, which I really appreciate. Um, are you familiar with Youth a Bag? They're probably going to be on the podcast in a few weeks. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, sh yeah. should I talk about it now or should we? Yeah, you can go ahead and mention it. That way people start yeah, to kind of well, think about it. Yeah. I, well, I'm I'm so glad to hear this. So uh, I had no idea this was happening. This was not planned. <laughs> um <laughs> But Youth of Bag creates, uh, they create an actual bag after your pet has passed. Um, and it's just, uh, it's customizable and it's a really beautifully uh, eco-friendly designed bag that, again, you can do drawings on. And it just really emphasizes the um, respect with handling their body even after they've passed. Um, so I think that's another thing. It's like, you know, getting into the, the world of, of grief and grief with pets. I mean, there's uh -huh. so many things we don't think about. And I'm so grateful to have these different professionals bringing forward these different components of it, you know, uh, reverence right. who, are, who are giving their time in that way. Uh -huh. And Youth the Bag, who's designing products that really put emphasis on letting your pets have a dignified death. I think that right. is just beautiful. I think that's really beautiful because why wouldn't we give them the respect? And the love that they have given us. Mm -hmm. Right. And on the kind of flip side of grief, perhaps the more, not more negative, but some of the realities is that I think some people when their pet passes, they obviously feel lonely. It's like, who can I talk to? Who's going to attribute the same level of value that I do to this issue? And then a, a level of embarrassment. I know people who have kind of been embarrassed by their grief you know they don't want to talk about it or express it and they're just so embarrassed that they're feeling so deeply Ooh. so I don't know if you have any recommendations or resources for that maybe uh any books or anything I mean you mentioned grief counseling which actually I don't think a lot of people think about grief counseling for one way you know for for, for humans or for pets and so sure that's kind of one option is having a grief counselor or Perhaps if you're already in therapy, maybe bringing it up to your therapist there. But, uh, you know, anything else that you can kind of think of to deal with the the loneliness or the embarrassment or some of these emotions that you're just not expecting? Yeah, definitely. You know, right off the bat, I think, you know, when you're you're asking about, is there a book? I do have an entire, uh, you know, list on my page full of podcasts and full of um books and full of just so many different things that really speak to pet loss in itself. But the first one that came to my mind is a children's book, and it's called Saying Goodbye to Lulu by Corinne uh, Demas, I believe, D-E-M-A-S. I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm uh, saying that correctly. <laughs> Wonderful New England um, uh, children's book author. And it's a children's book, right? But what she was sharing with me, because her and I, uh, we talked quite a few times. She's a wonderful person. She was telling me that when she was doing these readings of this children's book, she would have parents or have adults come up after and say, you know, be tearful. And it really hit home to them as well. So I would say saying goodbye to Lulu. And I've read it. I actually, the Tilly Project, the, uh, my organization, I went ahead and purchased, I think, like 25 copies or something and just made sure that all of my local uh, libraries had it. Because, again, I think pet loss is just so important, and especially with children. Because, uh, it? in you know, some cases, it's their first taste of grief. Is it? Uh, so I think that book is really one to check, worth checking out. Even though it's a children's book, I think that it really speaks 
to anyone, anyone who has right. lost a pet, anyone who has lost a pet. It's a, a beautifully illustrated, beautifully written book. Yeah, that's great. I think I've seen that book before. Uh, yeah. And immediately you think children's book, I'm good. Uh, right. But I mean, you're you're right. Whether it's a child or an adult, it might be your first time dealing with grief and you don't know what to expect or how it will affect you. So that's that's a great resource. Absolutely. There's another there's another book as well. Um, I love you more than tuna, I believe it's called it? I have it again on my website. But that's a an illustrated book, but it's made for adults. So that's another really wonderful one worth checking out. And then, of course, there's the classics like, you know, saying goodbye to Barney um, or the 10th good thing about Barney. You know what I'm talking about? It's a book about Barney. I'm uh-huh. forgetting. Um, but that's another <laughs> it's a classic that I grew up with. That was kind of my first introduction to pet loss and grief as a child um that i really i really appreciate uh, i know i'm butchering the name but i'm sure that folks listening you know <laughs> they hear it they're like oh yeah of course so that's right it's one. a quick google yeah right exactly <laughs> so i want to talk a little bit more about the tilly project just because i want people to know that that resource is available and it's out there and so the tilly project is a network of photographers who do yeah end-of-life pet photography. So if someone wanted to go about booking that, uh, what would you suggest? What are kind of the steps for doing that? Yeah, so the first step is going to be going to thetillyproject.org, um, and that is where you're going to find the directory as well as all the grief resources that we've been talking about today. Um, right up in the corner and on the menu as well, you'll see find a photographer near me, find a photographer. You just click on that. And uh, the Tilly Project is actually international. So we're even outside of the U.S. We're in some uh, everywhere, which has been absolutely incredible to be able to offer it in so many places. So you just find wherever you are located. Let's say you're located. I'm from Maine. So let's say uh, you're from Maine. You just go and find, you know, USA and then Maine. And um, you can look through some of the photographers list uh, the areas they serve. So I'm in Portland. So I would just, you know, look for someone who serves in that area or just look up whoever's there. Um, one thing I want to note is that the Tilly Project is truly a directory. So we have photographers on there who um, you do have to pay for their services. There are some who offer it at a discounted rate and there are some that volunteer their time. I volunteer my time and I'm so happy that we also have folks on there who it is, you know, helping support their business. Um, so that's one thing I, I just did want to note. So the next step after finding someone whose work that you see and it feels like that's how I really want these memories to be captured is in that style. I appreciate that photographer, you know, the next step would be to reach out to them um, and just have a discussion about uh, pricing and everything like that and see if it's, you know, something that it just aligns and, and kind of go from there. After that, you'll talk with your photographer. I don't want to speak for all photographers, but I know, and this is only speaking to me, just so, you know, folks kind of have an idea. Um, I'll just hear your story. I'll hear about if there's any concerns as far as mobility. We'll choose a location. We'll just talk about um, some expectations and I'll get some questions answered that will make it so that we have um, as smooth of a photo shoot as possible especially with, you know, the different circumstances that often come with it as well. So, right. And then after I, I'm not going to speak to after because photographers have so many different packages, some <laughs> right. folks do prints, some do digital. So, um, that's a conversation to have with the photographer, but, um, they'll be able to answer any questions for you and, and kind of talk about that. So yeah, that's kind of the process. Yeah, that's amazing. That's phenomenal that you've put together that directory as well as the resources. I just think it's, so helpful and it's just a topic that not a lot of people want to touch absolutely thank you for saying that i really i really appreciate um you recognizing that and everything um i I definitely know so you know you were talking about some of us are you know have been fortunate enough to know uh kind of you start to see the decline and everything tilly my cat who is the project was named after she passed away in a freak accident right in front of me she was uh four years old so I think it's also one of those things where it's like, I never got to have that. So Mm -hmm. I'm doing something with my grief too, which is, you know, one of the things that you can do is taking that grief and doing something with it. So I'm so grateful to be able to do something that I really never had the chance to do. So yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah. So your website is thetillyproject.org. And then where can people find you on social media? Yeah. So um, we have a Facebook page, The Tilly Project. We have a private group, The Tilly Project. Um, private, but you just have to answer questions to make sure you're a real person and then you're you're entered. <laughs> um, um, and then we have Instagram. It's going to be up and coming. It's something uh, that is going to be a focus for coming up. I've been slacking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we are on Instagram as well. Personally, you can find my work and everything. Just Lauren Smith Kennedy uh, are all my handles. So you can see my work there as well. And Lauren Smith Kennedy dot. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on tonight's episode. Really appreciate it. Yeah. And, you know, thank you for really taking the time to talk about something that so many people um, don't want to talk about and, you know, providing that information and just creating a space for folks. So thank you so much for having me. I really appreciated it. And I love talking with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to the Canine Culture Podcast. Please make sure you subscribe to the Canine Culture Podcast on your favorite podcast platform and make sure you're following us on social media. If you have any recommendations, any topics that you'd like to hear, if you know of any guests that would be good for the show, or if you yourself want to be a guest, please reach out to us. Send us an email at canineculturepodcast at gmail.com or send us a direct message on social media. Thank you for listening and please share this with any of your dog loving friends.